In today's video, we're using the free version of Resolve to create the clone trails effect. A super easy and cool way to show the motion of a shot all in one frame. Anyway, roll that intro. Hey guys, Nathan here. I don't know about you, but I've always liked those pictures that show, let's say someone doing a backflip, and it shows them in all the different positions in one picture. Well, the Clone Trails effect is just like that, and shout out to Cinecom.net for doing this tutorial in Premiere Pro. This is my take on a Resolve version of this effect. It's a great way to showcase the motion of a shot, especially for like extreme sports or something where people are jumping and flying through the air. And the best part is you can do it super easy. So let's get into it. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve 16, and we just have this shot of this older gentleman diving into a pool. Now one of the key components for this effect is that the camera doesn't move, so set it on a tripod and don't touch it. Now all the shots we'll be working with today are from storyblocks.com, not a sponsor. It's just an easy way to get shots of people doing cool stuff because I've tried to do a backflip once and I'm not doing that again. So I'm gonna move through frame by frame with the arrow keys of my keyboard and I just wanna find a shot that kind of fits for our motion. So I think right around here, right before he hits the water is great. I'm then gonna duplicate the clip. And the way I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna hold down Alt, click on the clip and drag it up. So we wanna hold on this frame and we're gonna do that by creating a freeze frame. We can right click, go into change clip speed and then click on freeze frame here. But a faster way of doing that is if we just click on our clip and have your playhead on the spot where you want the freeze frame to start and we're gonna hit shift R on our keyboard. And now the whole clip is a freeze frame. So we're gonna drag the end over to the playhead. So if we drag our playhead back, we can play through and you see it has the freeze frame and then it goes into the live motion seamlessly. So that's great. So what we wanna achieve is I'm just gonna disable this clip. We want to have him here and we also wanna have him in the air on the same frame. So the way we'll have to do that is by creating a mask around our diver here and we can do that in power windows in the color page. So here we are on the color page and I'm just gonna click on my power windows and click on pen tool. I'm then gonna zoom in and take my time to draw a mask around the swimmer. There, so now we have our power window outlining our swimmer and you really wanna take your time with this part to try and do a good job and get everything as close as you kind of can and fix up any little parts that you need to and then press Z to go back into full view. Now, to get this to output on top of the other image, what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and click add alpha output. So you wanna match your blue to your blue. So we just take our alpha and drag that onto our alpha output and boom. And as we drag through the clip, you can see they're both in the frame. And as we drag through, you'll notice I didn't do a super great job on the feet here. So let's clean that up. We're gonna go back into our power window and let's zoom into the area. And this is why you really wanna take your time to do a good job because it's masking out this part of the leg when we don't actually have a gap here. These are his feet. So let's see if we can do a bit better. Gonna just tighten that up a little bit. There, now let's zoom out with Z. And yeah, that's looking a bit better. Now what I find helps to kind of clean things up a little bit is I like to soften it up a little bit. Just add a bit of softness and then I like to make it just a bit bigger. Yeah, there, let's see how that works. There, that seems to work much better. So if we see it in motion, he's diving and then matches up right at the end. Perfect. So we can go back into the edit page. So now this looks great and all as he goes into the frame, but we can add a bit of a transition there for a little bit of fun. So I'm going to drag the clip up over top and I'm going to alt drag my lower clip. I'm then going to disable snapping and I'm just gonna offset by a few frames here. Perfect. I'm now gonna go into my composite mode and go all the way down to luminosity 
and you get this really cool ghosting effect. Shout out to Jamie Fenn for that tip. You can check his video down in the description. So then we can drag that over and kind of fade it in closer to the point where we get that switch. And now you get something that looks like this and you get kind of a cool ghosting effect as you transition between the frames. So it's just that easy, but what do you do if you have a little bit of camera movement? So here we have this top down drone shot and the camera does move a little bit throughout the shot. So what we wanna do is we wanna go into our color page. So then we wanna go into our tracker and then go into our stabilizer right here. We're then gonna go down here to camera lock and we're gonna stabilize the shot. Now, you can use whatever mode works best for you, but for me in this shot, perspective works just fine. So now, as we play through the shot, it stays rock solid. So, we can go back to the edit page. So now, we pick our frame, and let's say we wanna have some fun with it and get creative and use our shadow like at the beginning there. Okay, that's a great frame. We then wanna duplicate our clip by holding in Alt, dragging up, and duplicating it. Now we wanna grab our freeze frame, so we're gonna hit Shift R and drag over to the playhead. Now you may notice a bit of a problem here. If we go back to on top of the freeze frame, it's zoomed out, but on the live action stuff, it's zoomed in. And the problem is that the stabilization crop is not being applied to the freeze frames. Now there's a couple workarounds you can use for this, but here's a super easy method. So we're going to delete our freeze frame there. We're then going to right click on our clip and create new compound clip. You can name it whatever works for you and then click create. Now we have a compound clip and if we want to grab that shot of the shadow, so we'll just move over to where it works for us. Perfect. We can then duplicate our clip and then press shift R for a freeze frame, drag our playhead over. And if we go through frame by frame, you'll notice that there's absolutely no change at all. So it's a super quick fix. And then you go into the color page and create another mask, easy peasy. And then you get this. So now you can put a bunch of these frames in your shop, but you'll notice a bit of a problem with this clip. Did you see it? If we go back a few frames, you'll notice as soon as he goes behind, you can't see his leg between his other leg. And well, that's a problem. So we're gonna go into our color page. We're then going to add a new power window and we're gonna add another pen tool. So now we're gonna make sure we have our new one selected and we're gonna zoom in a bit here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fill in this gap. So just drawing through super quick and easy just to fill in this gap. So as we play through our clip, you can see it's not quite working. What we have to do is we have to click this bad boy and boom, you can now see that leg through the hole here. And then we can just do the same thing again. And we just press Z to zoom out. So now as we watch it through, you can see as he goes behind his other frame and then pops right in. We go into the other page to say the full thing play through and it works easy peasy. So anyway, folks, that's how you do the clone trails effect. Super easy in DaVinci Resolve. And yeah, if you like this video, be sure to hit like and get subscribed for lots more videos like this. I put out two Resolve tutorials every Monday and Thursday, but yeah, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye.